Hi, I'm Declan Connolly, founder of Bespoke Home Design, and thank you so much for checking out this 18-step terraced house reconfiguration execution plan. This execution plan comes with 47 drawings in both PDF and CAD format, which you can download below. The PDFs are for printing right now if you wish, and the CAD files are for editing with a relevant computer program. You also have a list of computer programs these CAD files work with, and these are listed on the second page of the PDF drawing pack. But before you go ahead and start using those drawings, you need to watch this presentation first, so you can understand what the drawings are all about. Now, this execution plan is all about reconfiguring the spaces and rooms that already exist in your terraced house, or as the Americans call it, remodeling. And we're going to do it in a way that grabs back a load of space that's currently sitting there going to waste. Terraced houses first became popular in the 1670s, and as you can imagine, our lifestyles have changed immeasurably since then. And as a result, the classic terraced house design is well out of date. Its design caters for a lifestyle that doesn't exist anymore. But with that said, there exists an opportunity to reinvent the humble terraced house. There's an opportunity sitting in your home right now to give your property a new lease of life. And to modernise it, as well as get a load more space out of the house as it currently stands. The trick is knowing what tweaks to make and where. We will quite literally be transforming your property into a brand new, bigger home that is unique to you and your family. And we'll be able to do all this without requiring the red tape nightmare of planning permission or even hiring an architect. However, you will need a structural engineer to design the structure for you. We're getting into some pretty serious structural work here, and if you are a full Bespoke Home Design Library member, you also have access to the Structural Work Guideline Report, so you might want to also check that out too. And if you're not a full member yet, then what are you waiting for? I am going to share the insider secrets on how to get a truckload of extra space out of your property as it currently stands, and turn it into a 21st century home in the process. So that's what this 18-step terraced house reconfiguration execution plan is all about. Now, you don't have to use all 18 steps. You can pick and choose the bits you like. I'm giving you all 18 for completeness sake. So to make your property look and feel like a brand new home, we are going to utilise the following five principles. Number one, we are going to improve circulation between each room and each floor as a whole. Number two, we are going to get more natural light and ventilation into the house. Number three, we want to provide a connection to the outdoors where we can. Number four, we are going to try to make each room multifunctional where possible. And finally, the fifth principle, which is maximising the space in every room. We are going to claw back any extra square foot of space where possible. Basic architecture looks at utilising space in a building, or in this case, your terraced house, and looking at the rooms and spaces using these five principles. Okay now, let's get started. Here are the ground and first floor plans of a typical UK terraced house. And starting with the ground floor, we enter the house in through the front door into a long narrow hallway. You've got the living room to your left, and it usually has a nice big bay window looking out the front. Walking further into the house, we have a separate dining room, with a rear window that looks out onto the garden. You have the stairs on the right that straddles the party wall, and it generally has a toilet tucked underneath it. Then we have some storage space near the rear kitchen. The toilet and storage spaces are interchangeable, so you might have the storage under your stairs and the toilet near the kitchen. And finally, you have the kitchen itself out the back, with side access to the garden. We then go up the stairs to the first floor, and across the top landing we have the main bathroom to the rear of the property. We then move across the landing and we have the second bedroom here, and this looks out onto the rear garden. And finally, at the end of the landing you have the master bedroom. This room sometimes has a bay window to match the ground floor, sometimes it doesn't. In this example, we don't have a bay window in this room. So let's go back downstairs and look at what we can do with the ground floor. The first issue we come up against is the fact that the hallway is too long. You get natural light coming in at the front of the house, but it soon peters out the further we walk into the property. The door location for the dining room also doesn't allow you to put anything up against the adjacent wall, because it will be in your way as you enter the room and make it feel claustrophobic. Also, the dining room is an underused space in a modern home, and certainly not a place to relax in. A tried and tested solution to all this is to remove the wall between the dining room and the hallway. Not only does this brighten up the place by allowing light from the rear of the house into the old hallway space, but also this becomes a far more functional room with a lot more space. And we're not going to stop there. This will be used in a really cool way later. The second issue we have is that the fireplace and chimney breast are a waste of space in the dining room. I mean, have you ever curled up for a fire in your dining room? We will remove the old chimney breast and fireplace in the dining room to free up some space. This will also have a very cool knock-on effect later on, as we move on to the first floor, but for now, we have even more space in the dining room. Next, we come to the living room. 
We will leave the fireplace and chimney breast in place in the living room as we can utilise it for a fire in that room. The issue here is that the living room is completely disconnected from the rest of the house. It's like an entity all of its own. And access to the room is a bit weird from our newly opened up dining room because you have to come around the side. We want to bring a feeling of connection with the rest of the ground floor and have better circulation between this room and the dining room. To achieve this we simply make an opening in the wall to locate some double doors between the living room and the dining room. Now we have a link between the living room and the rest of the house. The double doors can be opened or closed for whichever situation suits. Now that the living room is more connected to the dining room we also want to connect the dining room a bit better with the rest of the property and in this case with the outside. The only access to the rear garden is through the kitchen so we want to add some more access to the outside world. What this will also do is make the room feel even larger as well as give us a connection to the outside. One of the tricks in home design is manipulating our senses in a good way to make rooms and spaces in our home feel larger or smaller depending on what is required. This is one of those tricks and will make the dining room feel even bigger. To achieve this we simply create a larger structural opening in the external wall at the back of the dining room out onto the rear terrace. Here we will put in some full back doors or you could put in some sliding doors if the width of the opening allows it. Now we have a much better connection with the outside. Next in step 5 we come to the kitchen. The kitchen area is functional for cooking and stuff but not a place to hang out in. It's also very small and pokey with far too little storage space and it's kind of tucked away into the back of the house. So here is the big move. We are going to move the kitchen to where the dining room is currently located. This creates a kitchen dining room in the very heart of the home. It creates a livable as well as functional space so we're doing double duty here and making one area multifunctional. A place to cook, a place to eat and a place to hang out in. So let's look at what the house looks like now. We freed up a lot of space to the back of the house and we can do a lot of cool stuff here. However the storage cupboard is poorly located. So step 6 we are going to demolish this storage cupboard so we can use the space more efficiently. This opens up the back of the house even more and it's not the only bit of demolition we are going to do. The downstairs toilet is rammed underneath the stairs. Whilst this does put it out of the way it's not a very nice space. It's functional but cramped. So step 7 is that we remove the understairs toilet. So we get it out of there all together. We're going to use this space for something else. Next we need to open up the access to the rear space if we are going to use it efficiently. So step 8 we are going to reconfigure the rear wall and the door position so we can get the most from the back room. The reason for this will become a lot clearer in a second. Step 9 is that we now construct a proper ground floor bathroom in the space we freed up by demolishing the storage area. We could put in a new ground floor toilet, sink and shower in part of the old kitchen. This new larger bathroom is a lot more functional and a lot nicer of a room than we had previously under the stairs. The bathroom also forms a corridor between the kitchen dining room and the room to the rear of the house which we will need to look at. In step 10 we will also construct a new kitchen storage or utility space underneath the stairs. But you could have your washing machine in here too if you liked. What I'm showing you here isn't written in stone. We can install some sliding doors and utilise the full space under the stairs. With step 11 we want to create a separation with the back room and the bathroom along with the access to the garden. So we reconfigure the outside access by providing two new doors and a wall between the new corridor and the rear room. We then form a new door opening with new bifold doors folding back to provide a much larger opening and they allow direct access to the outdoor terrace and garden. And the final step of the ground floor, step 12, we furnish the rear room. And we can make several uses out of the new back room. We can use it as an extra bedroom. We can use it as a small gym room. We can use it as a kids playroom. We can use it as a study or home office. You can pretty much use it in any way you want. The new room can be a great space to work from with new double doors giving direct access onto the garden. And that's the completed ground floor. It originally looked like this and now it looks like this. Now we can turn our attention to upstairs in the first floor and let's take a look at what we already have here. So at the top of the stairs and across the top landing we have the main bathroom to the rear of the property. We then move across the landing and we have the second bedroom here and this looks out onto the rear garden. And finally at the end of the landing we have the master bedroom. This room sometimes has a bay window to match the ground floor, sometimes it doesn't. In this example we don't have a bay window in this room. So now let's go back and look at the main bathroom. It's a big room but it doesn't have a separate shower and the bath doubles up as a shower bath. So in step 13 we will refurbish the bathroom and put in a shower unit. And we'll also add another sink so we can make this bathroom a lot better, a lot more functional and a nicer place to be in. Next we look at the second bedroom. The second bedroom has poor storage and the chimney breast takes up a lot of room. Plus it dictates the wardrobe sizes we can get in here as we can only use wardrobes that fit in between the side walls and the chimney breast. 
Now remember, we have already removed the chimney breast in the ground floor. So step 14 we are going to do the same here and get rid of the chimney breast in this room too. So now we have not only pinched back some square footage, but we have also made this room a lot more flexible in terms of storage and furniture arrangements, because we don't have to fit around the chimney breast anymore. And speaking of flexibility, the entrance door to the second bedroom opens out onto the adjacent wall, which means there is no room to place anything on the wall otherwise you would walk right into it as you enter the room. So step 15 is to move the door to the second bedroom so we can fit in a wardrobe along the wall without walking into it. Now that the chimney breast has been removed, the second bedroom has a much better position for the bed. We also have much more choice on where to put our wardrobes. So step 16 is to rearrange the furniture and provide more storage. And we can now use the side wall too as we have moved the door. So now let's look at the finished bedroom. Next, let's look at the master bedroom. The master bedroom is too big and not an efficient use of space. There is square footage here doing nothing. The chimney breast is still in this room too. But we will keep it here as we will want to leave in the fireplace in the living room. This does mean we will need to reconfigure the room a bit in terms of bed and wardrobe positions to get the best use from this space. But the first thing we want to do is add an ensuite bathroom as we have the room to do it. So we'll put in a toilet, sink and shower. We don't want to use up too much space with this so it's small but very functional and will make a massive difference to this room. Next, step 18, we now need to rearrange furniture and provide more storage in the master bedroom. So the bed moves over a bit and we can maintain the bit of storage behind it. And the big change is the huge wardrobe we can put up against the wall adjacent the entrance door. Let's look at this finished room now. And let's look at the first floor as a whole. Now, it's not immediately apparent, but the dashed line outline of the stairs is actually the stairs below on the ground floor. At first floor level this is floor space. It's probably the most neglected and unused areas in the whole house and we can use this space for storage. So bonus step 19 is where we get some extra storage here by putting in a storage cupboard. Now let's look at the first floor as it was and here it is now. And the ground floor originally looked like this and now it looks like this. So there you have the 18 step terraced house reconfiguration execution plan with the extra bonus step. I hope I've given you some ideas in this presentation. There are of course other things we can do with the house to make it a lot bigger, such as a ground floor extension, a loft conversion or even a basement. And we have an execution plan for each of them too in the Bespoke Home Design Library, so make sure to check them out. And remember that if you have any questions or comments then please post them in the Bespoke Home Design Brain Trust group on Facebook. And don't forget, if there is a topic you would like us to create an execution plan for, then also let us know. And finally, there's also a lot of other stuff here in your membership area to check out, and I hope you get a lot of value from it. And I'll see you in the next video.